All right. Well, it's great to be back to share the Word of God. Hey, Jonathan, sermon last week was top-notch. I listened to the whole thing and commented, and I was inspired by it. And we're just grateful for the men and women of God that the Lord is using here at Hawthorne Assembly. When I first came, there were four guys that were feeling called into the ministry and were some level of taking their global university, Berean School of the Bible, and of course, Pastor Dave. I just bumped into him yesterday at Walmart and uh, his wife, and of course, they're at Spooner today at River's Edge. They're running close to 25 every Sunday. That church hasn't run 25 in 25 years, I kid you not. That's, not, I'm, that's good, amen. We'll just keep believing. They'll keep growing and keep advancing and do a good work there in Spooner. Amen. That's an exciting thing. That's worth an amen right there. Well, we're in the midst of family and en- en- emphasis, enrichment, and development, and I kind of have given an overarching theme to this uh, nine or ten weeks from Mother's Day until July 4th, Independence Day. I've coined the term good neighbor. I mean, if I said like a good neighbor, you would know what to say next, wouldn't you? Stay for, yeah. I mean, how quick is that? And we want to be good neighbors. We want to be like the Good Samaritan. Now, this is not the message today, but it's just kind of our overarching theme that we want to be good neighbors. We want to be good witnesses of the kingdom of God. And so I'm trying to feed into your life in these next seven weeks. And so from Mother's Day until Independence Day, we kind of turn inwards with sermons. They're not outreach sermons so much. They're more about family and things you're doing uh, with your spouse, what you're doing uh, to raise your children, and many, many things. Just really trying to think of ways that we can develop and grow in our walk with God. Ultimately, a lot of churches spend so much of their year just feeding their flock and don't look beyond the four walls of their congregation, and that's not who we are. We are a Pentecostal missions-minded. We want to go out there and reach our world. Amen? That's what we're here for. We're not here just for us. We're here for that lost world that's out there. Go out there in the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Amen? But right now, during these weeks, we really focus inward. And, uh, you know, our goal is to one day have any, listen to what I'm saying here now, any needed ministry that reaches into a felt need. Do you know what a felt need is? That means that we've got a group of people that fall into a certain category, and we should have ministry for them because we can reach into that area. It's right there in front of us, whatever that might be. Now, last year, we haven't had it this year, and we should again. It's a small it's a small thing we do, but we did the blessings of the bikes, trikes. Remember that last year? And we should do that again this year. But, you know, our hearts are heavy right now because our brother Tony Petit uh, last Sunday was on his motorcycle and minutes later was in the presence of Jesus. And uh, so we never know how our ministry is going to reach out to people and touch people. And I had a couple of beautiful conversations with Tony before he went to be with Jesus. And he always responded kindly to my messages. And that he listened because he would talk about the things I'd share. And I know that his parents, who were godly parents, who it was my privilege to, of course, officiate Jerry's celebration of life. But, of course, I was there uh, at the end of Shirley's life. And they both, their, their greatest desire for mom and dad was that all of their children would be followers of Jesus. And so we want to reach into felt needs. So that means if we need a Royal Rangers impact type of program, we're going to do it. If we need more of a men's ministry outreach, we're going to do it. Uh, we, we, we were dreaming about something we might do that's a, a big outreach for women where we have some kind of... Uh, expo or something. Hannah has been talking to me about a couple different ideas. We're just generating ideas. Nothing's hard and fast. We're just thinking. We're dreaming. We should be dreamers. 
We should be people thinking about how we can reach into our world. Now, that's not what we're doing today. We're turning inwards. But just to think about it, if we need to have a young adults ministry, if we need to have more Sunday evening gatherings, if we need to have more missions trips that they are just cyclical so you can kind of depend upon them and know where we're going and when we're going, then we'll do it because it may help grow our church. Now, that's a big list, and that requires lots of leaders Lots of workers, lots of participants. To grow inward, we must place our focus on the outward harvest. Did you hear me? But these few weeks right now, we're going to turn inward. But you've got to hear me clearly. For us to really grow, it's not just to minister to you. It's for us to build you up so you can minister to others. So turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 4. And stand with me as soon as you get there. Joshua chapter 4, and look at verses 21 through 24. Joshua chapter 4, 21 through 24. You're standing, we're reading from the NIV version. Thank you for standing if you can. And let's read beginning at verse 21 of the NIV. He said to the Israelites in the future, when your descendants ask their parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had all crossed over. 24. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Let's pray before we're seated. Father God, thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. Thank you that we can learn from history. Thank you that we can learn things from the Old Testament. Even on this Memorial Day weekend, God, we're just grateful for your word. May it resonate deep in our hearts today. Amen. You may be seated. Now, throughout the years, I've shared multiple messages about leaving a spiritual heritage in our circle of love. Because like I said, we're turning inward. So we really want to think about what we can do to minister to our loved ones, what we can do to minister to those who are close to us in those, those circles of influence we have. Uh, even, even in a sense, maybe some people that you're close to, uh, that not just family members, but neighbors, uh, and just how we can minister to brothers and sisters that you gather with that I was told today, I missed it for the senior moments. I'm sorry I missed senior moments, but... Uh, Obviously, we want to be those kind of people who are intentional about whatever we're doing. And so this morning, this is a top 10 message for me. It may not impact you the way it impacts me, but I feel compelled to make this kind of one of the annual 10 messages. Now, I spent eight hours yesterday. I just seriously want you to know, I spent eight hours yesterday tweaking this message. You've heard part of this message before, but I added new things, took things out, and made it so that it's... For us today, something and some things I felt like the Lord laid on my heart. And so this morning, in light of our feed focus, I want to share something which highlights the passing on of a godly heritage. It should resonate with all of us about the important process of leaving spiritual markers in life. And I call them memory stones. Memory stones. Especially on this Memorial Day weekend. Now, this used to be called Armistice Day, tomorrow. And it really is a day to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Men and women who died in battle. That's what Memorial Day, Armistice Day, okay? That's what that was for. Maybe it wasn't Armistice Day. Maybe that's Veterans Day. Maybe, no, it is Armistice Day, I think. I am correct. And so tomorrow, will be a, they will memorialize the brave men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Most communities have a memorial location. In Lake Nebagabin, where I live, it's the Veterans Memorial Armed Service Tribute. It's right down there uh, by the City Hall, right there by the Dairy Queen. It's a beautiful display honoring the men and women who have served in our armed services, but it's a memorial. To, of course, the epitome would be those who perished in the wars. Wilmer, where my parents live, they have the flags of honor. They put up at about 140 flags. They're, they put them up uh, this weekend. It's beautiful. 
they're all contained within about an area the size of, of this sanctuary right here, 140 American flags, pretty cool looking, and uh, called the Flags of Honor in Wilmer. And if you go to Superior right down the street here, there's a number of memorials that they have for veterans, but of course, the most well-known is the Bong Historical Veterans Center. And that's a cool place. If you've never been there, you should take time to go there because you can get a better appreciation for the depth of sacrifice of the men and women who served our nation. Amen? Of course, memorials are erected for many reasons. The Bible has many references to memorials. Often it's connected to a great victory or some great moment in history. Because, you know, I know this in my own life. Everybody wants a win. Everybody wants a win. They want to be reminded of when there was a great victory, a great win, a great thing. I mean, I'm watching the Minnesota Timberwolves. They're down 0-2. I'm kind of sad because I was hoping they were going to go all the way to the NBA Finals. And so we're looking for a win, you know what I'm saying? So we can cheer on our team. But often, even when it's when we think about the Word of God and we think about victories, they're different looking when we think about when God shares with us throughout history through the word what victories, what success, what things are worth memorializing. Sometimes a win, a divine connection with God can actually to the world look like a failure. Jacob wrestled with God and he walked away with a limp. It was a memorial. He'll never forget it. David obeyed God and got chased by Saul for a big chunk of his ministry. What's all this about God? He put me kind of in charge, and the guy that was in charge is about ready to kill me. Joseph was sold into slavery, accused of doing things, but all those things, all those those things bring great memorials into our life about, wow, how, how God was faithful even in difficult times. And the list goes on and on. I could tell you about another 10 things in the Scriptures similar to that. But for us today, my goal is for each of us is to do what the Word of God tells us to do as it relates to keeping memories alive. And I love all four seasons of Midwest. I was going to say Minnesota, but I'm in northwest Wisconsin, so forgive me. But most of my winters have been in Minnesota. And, uh, but I love all four seasons. And every year during the summer or fall, we would take our children up the North Shore, and we would go hiking, sightseeing, camping, and of course, collecting agates. Man, we had to collect agates. I mean, who, who here collects agates? Come on. Raise your hand so I can see that you relate to what I'm talking about. Okay. We'd go swimming. We'd jump off the cliffs at the Temperance River. If you've never jumped off the cliff at the Temperance River, you have not lived, let me just tell you. And so uh, we would spend hours at the beach by Silver Bay. Janet's best friend in high school, uh, they had property. They went all the way up to Lake Superior. So we'd sit on their beach. If you've ever gone by Palisade Head, you all know where Palisade Head is? The property right next to them is Janet's best friend's property. So we would sit um, on the beach there, and we'd look at uh, guys and gals climbing the cliff there at Palisade. So pretty cool location to hang out, let me tell you. As long as the black flies were not out, it was wonderful. Amen? But we'd collect agates. Now, um, this is, of course, the kind of agate you want to find, like this one. That's a butte. That did not come from the North Shore, okay? (laughs) That came from Brazil, but my wife, she wrote some sweet little things about me on the bottom of here, and uh, she gave me this. This is a big agate. This This is a beauty, okay? This is more like a wonderful agate you get on the North Shore. That's about the size. You can barely tell from there that it's an agate, but trust me, that's an agate from the North Shore. That's what they look like. And good memories, are, good memories are important. We all take pictures. We all have our cell phones probably loaded with pictures, don't we? Because we want good memories. 
We want to memorialize things. We want visual memories. And thousands of years ago, they wanted memory, so they collected stones. I shared this message a few years ago, and remember I had 12 stones piled up here. I had them here for like half a year just to kind of make sure you got the message about how we have to have memorial stones in our life. And there were 12 stones, they're sitting right out there now, 12 stones right here to remind us. And with that in mind, turn to chapter 3 of Joshua, and let's read some of the excerpts about what do these stones mean? Why do we need these stones in our life? Why do we need these memorials? Why are they important? So chapter 3, I'm reading from the NIV, beginning at verse 1. It says, Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went... Oh, i got to turn my, my speaker down. Excuse me. There we go. If you didn't turn your ringer off on your phone, do it now. Pastor Joe just did his. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Verse 4. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. They are getting ready, church, to cross the Jordan River. Moses is dead, and Joshua is the new leader. Watch the ark, he says. Watch the ark. Pay attention. Make sure you know where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the distance of 2,000 cubits, let me convert it for you, 3,000 feet away. That's a long ways away. 5,280 feet is what? Um, You're good. It's more than half a mile away. And it's saying pay attention to it. That's a long way ahead of you to be paying attention. Of course, obviously, it's being carried. But you better be paying attention. In the, our walk with God, you just can't be flippant about it. You need to pay attention to where God is in your life every day. And often, he is that still, small voice, right? Watch the ark, but stay about 3,000 feet away from it. I guess God really is serious when he says, pay attention. Pay attention. I believe God is still telling us in 2024, pay attention. Make sure you're leaving markers in life so that your children will know and your children's children and people around you will know what matters in your life. Amen? The ark was the presence of God. It didn't just symbolize God's presence. God's presence was with them. That's a big difference. We're believing that the third person the Trinity is with us here today, right now, amen? And he's either going to confirm what I'm saying to you, or maybe you're just not paying attention and you need to. Pay attention. That's not me saying it. That's the Holy Spirit saying it to you today. Pay attention. I've had to be told often in my Christian walk, pay attention. Imagine the multitude of people and the parents were responsible for getting their families into the promised land, never forgetting to pay attention to where the ark was going. Now you think, of course, part of the deal was they could just kind of follow the crowd, but sometimes following the crowd is the worst thing to do. They may be going in the wrong direction. Turn, Joshua 3, 5 says this, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua tells the people, get ready. The Lord is going to do something awesome. Awesome. I like to use that when I am on Facebook once in a while. I like one word replies. So I say awesome, fantastic, spectacular. I'm busy. I can't write. Now, sometimes I write big old paragraphs, but most of the time I just respond with awesome or spectacular or thanks or praise the Lord or whatever. Part of leaving a godly legacy is modeling godly qualities day in and day out. Would you agree? 
Absolutely. Moms and dads, are we paying attention to the presence of God, the ark, in 2024? Because what, listen to here, this is one of the most important things. It's in red. That means it's for me too. It means I got to pay attention to this. I'm a grandpa more than anything else now, but I want to leave a godly heritage for my grandchildren and a godly heritage for my children. Because whatever you are paying attention to is what your children will remember about you in the future. Do I need to say that again? Whatever you are paying attention to is what your children, I was so convicted by the pastor of the Litchfield Assembly of God Church, he was preaching, In all of us pastors, let's just be honest, we're quirky. And we think, well, I don't know if he's as good a preacher as I am. I'm telling you, I got so convicted by the Holy Ghost, I keep forgetting it's not him, it's the Spirit of the living God that's operating in his life. And he says, a lot of you need to take your phones and shut them off and get away from them for a while and get into the Word of God. When, how, how important is the Word to you compared to your phone? You're more concerned about where your phone is than where the Word of God is. And I went, he's right. He's right. He convicted me. Thank goodness I wasn't on my phone at that moment. I was holding my grandson. Man, they are hot. You know that? I'm sitting in church and I'm sweating because this little, I mean, he's just like radiating heat. Okay, so you know I've said plant a garden. Word from the Lord, right? Greg, come on up here, brother. You can start this and then just let it just work its way. I want every adult, I think there's enough in there. Uh, I may have to take some from some people. Let me count. Yeah, every adult can take one. We'll talk about it later. They're all beans. They're all heirloom beans. Plant a garden. They only take from 55 to 60 days. Lois Moss, I'm going to give credit to whom credit due, says they're, just the, the, they're one of the best staples to grow, Pastor, in northwest Wisconsin. Short growing season, right, Lois? And I remember when I went to her house when I first met her, I won't say how many because that's like a trade secret, but she had more than one can of, of one quart of beans canned in her basement. A couple more. <laughs> so you hold on to these because they have an application to the message today and you'll find out. Whatever you are paying attention to is what your children will... Oh, thank you, Brother Scott. Church leadership, deacons, teachers, helpers, Sunday school teachers, whatever. This applies to you. Church goers, church members, church attenders, adherents, whoever. This applies to you. With that in mind, turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. You just can't go through life by this... the by your emotions and by the seat of your pants, hanging on by, you know, you got to get involved. You got to be intentional. You got to realize that every moment counts. I'm not saying not to have vacation. I'm not, 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 I'm not saying don't have little, you know, take a nap on Sunday afternoon. Don't, I'm not saying that. I'm saying make sure you're fully engaged. Amen? You understand. First Peter 2, verses 4 through 5 says, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So we get it out of Peter, and we also are reminded of what Joshua said. Did everybody get one, Greg? Is there any left over? Praise the Lord. All right. Those are some good beans, let me just tell you. You will not be disappointed. Plant a garden. I haven't said that in a while. That was a word from the Lord about, what, three years ago, right? Plant a garden. It's becoming more and more a reality. With the, with, and if Jesus tarries, it's going to be more important. Plant a garden. Look at the price of food nowadays. Outrageous. Outrageous. 
I think a little candy bar is over two dollars. Two dollars. They're shrinking too in size. Even little Debbies are expensive. I don't eat those anymore. Anybody still eat little Debbies? Oh, God bless you. Okay, so Peter says it. Joshua says it. He says, consecrate yourself. Consecrate is a very important word. Everybody say consecrate. This is the way this sermon gets deeper inside you. Consecrate for us means to set apart. I looked it up yesterday just to make sure I was right. The very first synonym for... Oh, hey, hey. They're all excited. They must have heard what I said. (laughs) Consecrate, the very first synonym is to sanctify. It's like when you take an animal that... And there is no perfect animal... They just found the the lamb with the fewest blemishes because they're still flawed because they came into a flawed world. But they found the most perfect lamb they could. And then you know what they did? They consecrated it. They sanctified it. They set it apart for the work of ministry. That's what that means. It means it's now been blessed. It's, It's unto the Lord. We're doing it not just for doing it. We're doing it unto the Lord. We've consecrated it. Joshua says, consecrate yourselves. Get yourselves right with God. Confess any known sin or unknown sin. Just get it spilled out. Amen? That's part of that. Consecrate for us means to set apart, to realize we are not just ordinary. What Christ did for us requires us to live our lives according to his precepts and plans found in the word. If all your children, listen now, don't get angry with me because I'm going to make this all fit. Because some of you might just have a knee jerk like, oh, I don't want to listen to him anymore. He's touching sacred ground. If all your children remember is Walt Disney, sporting events, camping, watching movies, eating popcorn, but they don't ever remember Bible reading, helping out the less fortunate, you as parents showing mercy, offering forgiveness, fellowshipping with other believers at their homes, there will not be the number of spiritual, quality spiritual memory stones for them to follow. There's nothing wrong with Disneyland. There's nothing wrong with sporting events. But if that's all the memory stones they have, you have failed. Both sets of memory stones are important. Having fun at Temperance River is important. You know what Aaron and I talked about when we were there the other day? I said, Aaron, do you remember when you got filled with the Holy Ghost and you were laying on the yard outside the church speaking in tongues for about 10 minutes? It's a memory stone in his life. He'll never forget. You got to have those in your life. You got to have moments. Whatever is not a priority in your life will not be a priority in your children's life. Or your grandchildren's life. If church is an option, it will be more of an option in your grandchildren's life. You can see it even through the word of God. By the third generation, they were usually wandering. Look throughout the whole word of God. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. I could keep going. Thank goodness God is the God of the second, third, fourth chance, fifth chance, sixth chance. Amen. Amen. Thank goodness I had two children that were wayward. My oldest and my daughter, they both were wayward. Amen? But there was a number of spiritual memory stones in their life that they knew what they needed to return to. Train up a child, leave memory stones in their life, and they won't depart from it. They might go a long time wandering. Even Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham, was wayward for a long time. I'm not telling you to forget the first part of the list. I'm suggesting that the second part of the list is so internally significant that it requires our consecration, effort. I mean, you make effort when you're getting ready to go to, I mean, when we're going on trips, I've been to Disneyland. I've been to uh, Orlando, Florida. I've been to, uh, what's the other park in Orlando? Universal Studios? 
man, I'm, I mean, I'm checking it out. I'm doing all kind of study. I'm figuring the best price. I'm going to make it so it's me- memorable. Man, you got to put effort into eternal things too. You just, just don't, oh, I'll show up for church and that's good enough. No, you got to make effort. That's why I gave you these beans. Plant a garden. Take your kids outside with you. Make this a spiritual memory stone. <coughs> now, if you don't want to have a garden, <coughs> t- take this and give this to your neighbor that you know has a garden and say, our pastor gave us these beans. They're heirloom beans. They're good beans. These are Blue Lake FM1. I have no idea. Are they good? Has anybody ever had them before? Blue Lake. Who's a bean? Lois, you think they're all right? Okay, praise the Lord. They got the Lois Moss seal of approval on them. Hey, these are non-GMO. Man, look at that. And it only takes 60 days, and they'll be popping. Or harvesting. You harvest them in 60 days, can't you? So if you're not going to plant these in your garden, take these, give them to your neighbor that has a garden, or do something just with your children and say, you know, pastor in church today said that we should have memory stones in our life. And planting a garden can be one of those things where we talk about the Lord, like the Bible says, when you lay your head down, when you rise up, when you're going here or there, when you're in the garden, make it a spiritual moment. Make it a spiritual memory stone. I'm helping you. I'm helping you plant seeds and make memory stones in your life. A godly heritage must be passed on. I'm just looking at my granddaughters. I'm looking at Guinevere. And I'm looking at Verity. And Muriel. And now Alistair. And I'm looking at Eleanor and Rainey. And baby in the womb, seven, I'm, I feel just as obligated to make sure that I leave spiritual markers, memory stones in their life. I'm loud with them. I get silly and crazy, but you know what I do? I pray with them as often as I can. I want them to know that prayer is important. I want them to know that everything about God is super important. Amen? I'm not, I'm not just here just to take up space. I'm here to make an impact on my grandchildren's life. Amen? How about you? Your circle of love and influence needs to pay attention to the ark, and they'll pay more attention to the ark if you'll pay more attention to the ark because you have high influence in people's life because you are a born-again world overcomer, and God wants to use you. We lived in a messed-up world, a messed-up world, and we are God's answer. Amen? Amen. And whenever the temporal takes priority over the eternal, you know what it's our job to do? Repent. There's a word you don't hear very often. Repent. You do. You need to repent. You need to say, God, I, I repented last Sunday. <laughs> During the, that preacher, he just caused me to have to repent. I did. I, Johnny, I had to say, Lord, I am making a new effort not to be on my phone so much. God, please forgive me that I have made that thing way too dependent. It's, om- it's more dependent in my life than your Holy Spirit sometimes. Not good. Not good. I believe God partners with those who are fully committed to His plan. And He helps us. Let me see if I can find this verse real quick. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, while we're doing that, let's, we're, we're almost out of time. Let me see how much I got left. Oh, I got so much. We'll just finish it up next week. It's too good to rush through it. Let me, let me find this verse for you. Uh, Philippians.
maybe somebody can find it for me. It's, it's either Philippians 1 or Philippians 2, but what it says is, God gives you the desire to serve Him more faithfully. He'll actually help you. Because sometimes, I was thinking about this. I remember when a pastor once said, uh, that you need to discipline your desire, and when you discipline your desire, it becomes a delight. And God will help you discipline your desire. He'll make it so you want, uh, I think it's like Philippians 1.9 or 2.9, it's right around there somewhere. I'm just having trouble finding it right this sec. What? What does it say? There it is. Was that 2.13? Thank you. I'm going to read it so it gets on the, on the message today. Let me get to it real quick. It's such, you should highlight that in your Bible. I was just looking at that for like a half hour the other day. Philippians 2. You know, when you get 62, 63, things aren't as crisp. Pray for me that things would stay sharp and crisp. You know, I'm, seriously, you got you to gotta be intentional about this stuff because it just like goes in one and out the other. Philippians 2.13. Here we go. Let's read it again. It's so powerful. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. How powerful is that? And I love it in the NLT. Let me read it to you in the NLT also. It says, For God is working in you. Everybody say, God is working in me. Say it again. God is working in me. Giving me the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Do you believe that? That's Bible. We need memorials in our life. We need memory stones in our life. We need eternal memory stones in our life. Plant a garden. Spend some time with your kids or your grandkids. Tell them why it's important to have moments like this. Say, you know what? In the Bible, you could be saying as you planted these that these are going to come up. I was going to give you all a stone. I was, I was, I was struggling. Last, yesterday, I'm going, should I just go get a bunch of stones and give these people a bunch of stones? No. I thought, Lord, what should I do? I had about six different things that kept going through my head. And finally, early this morning, go get everybody some seeds. Because there's, there's, there's going to be a result from this. And your kids and your grandkids and whoever will never forget it. Lord Jesus, we just thank you today. We thank you, God, as we wrap up this service this morning that we are grateful for memories in our life. And, and we'll finish this sermon next week. Lord, we just thank you for memory stones and moments like Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself. Get right with God. Be ready. God's going to do great things in our lives. And Lord, we, each of us here today needs these sacred moments. We need these memorials. Even as tomorrow we honor men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice. God, today, no one, you are the epitome. Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for a friend. So Jesus, we're thankful today as we are contemplating our own walk with you, as we're considering what we need to do with the breath and life that you've given us. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me, Lord. And so today we pray that each of us soberly from the depths of our heart and the depths of our soul are considering the words said today and how we will respond and how we will leave memory stones in the people around us. In your name, amen. Stand with me this morning. I don't remember which Quick Trip that I had walked into, but what I love about Quick Trip is every one of the helpers has their name. And the one I walked into, his name was Luke. You know what Pastor Joe's doing. He's already talking about how that connects to the Lord. I said, wow, what a great name. That's what I said first. I said, that's a great Bible name. And he kind of smiled and affirmed that. 
And I was just thinking as I was standing out there, another way you can affirm your children and your grandchildren is remind them of what their name stands for, what the heritage of that is. Uh, I, we had no clue they were going to name our grandson like, like we had any input in it, but they named him Alistair with a Y at the end, T-Y-R, Reed, R-E-E-D. And because uh, a bruised reed, he will not what? He will not what? Won't break it. And he's no reed shaken in the wind. And Alistair, Aaron said he was looking for a name that meant like uh, mighty. What was the other word that he said? I'm trying to remember. But anyway, they looked it up. It means defender of men. Defender of men. And so I'm going to declare that over my grandson, that God, that he's got a, a, a holy appointed name for a purpose. So Aaron means light bringer. Timothy, I tell him why he was named after his uncle who died tragically at 14 and what that means from the word of God. What you can do is remind your children of why they have a godly heritage, why their name is important, why they have huge value. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. And I've got two more packages of beans. We're just not going to let them lay around. They need to get in the gardens. So if you have someone you want to give one to, you come up here. There's two left. Don't take mine. This is mine over here. If you take mine, the fleas of a thousand camels will invade your bed tonight. Do not take my beans. But there's two more left right here. I'll put them right up here. You give them to someone. Be brave. Be brave. Give them to one of your children. This is feed week. Give it to a wayward child. Say, Pastor Joe talked about this today. Lord, thank you as we leave this place today. We're just grateful, God, that we want to leave memory stones in our children, in our children's children, in our loved ones' lives. We thank you for it now. Pray for your safety and your covering over every individual this Memorial Day weekend. Bring everybody safely back home this weekend, God, from journeys and travels in your name. Amen.